In this video, we're going to talk about SIADH, which stands for Syndrome of Inappropriate Antidiuretic Hormone. Before I get into this uh, medical condition, I think it's important to talk about antidiuretic hormone, ADH, what it is and what does it do in the body. And uh, when we talk about syndrome of inappropriate, what do you mean by the word inappropriate? Is it too low? Is it too high? What they mean is that the ADH levels are higher than normal. So let's talk about ADH with a very, very nice diagram. Uh, this diagram is of the nephron. And the nephron, there's about a million of them in the kidney. And if you blow up a nephron, this is uh, what it looks like. It's labeled. Each part has a label. Uh, this is the entry point right here. Uh, this is where the blood vessels um, enter. Um, all the particles are filtered through this part of the nephron called the glomerulus. And then once they're filtered, they can go inside the nephron. Certain uh, nutrients or uh, electrolytes are reabsorbed. And uh, this is the PCT, which is the proximal convoluted tubule. And then the particles and the fluid uh, go down into this loop of Henle. There's the descending limb right here for obvious reasons and then this is the ascending limb and as you can see at each stage certain things happen water is reabsorbed or salt is reabsorbed and then finally we get up to this part which is the distal convoluted tubule and this is where aldosterone uh, a hormone works and then finally the last part is the, called the collecting duct. And what comes out of the collecting duct is essentially urine because everything ha has happened, everything that needs to be reabsorbed has happened, and now you just have waste left over in the form of urine. This is what we need to talk about, this part of the nephron called the collecting duct. And this is where ADH works on. And what does ADH do? Well, ADH works on the collecting duct by bringing back water reabsorbing water back into your system from the urine. That is basically the primary pathophysiology of SIADH. That because you have too much ADH, you have a lot of water being reabsorbed back into the system. And as a result, all this water will dilute um, the bloodstream. And as a result, you will have a resultant hyponatremia. Okay. Too much fluid, less solute. And as a result, think about what's happening. If a lot of water is coming back, the urine is getting more concentrated. So the urine that actually does eventually flow out is very concentrated urine. And this is a symbol for concentration. Concentrated urine. Okay. Now I'll go back to this later it, just to refresh, but that's essentially the pathophysiology. So now we can go back and start talking about um, SIADH. So why does this happen? Why would somebody develop this um, condition? Well, the etiology, uh, there's several reasons. The first is so certain medications, uh, side effects of certain medications, and in particular the chemotherapy agents. Uh, there's a lot of chemotherapy drugs that can cause uh, SIADH. There's vincristin. Um, there's vinblastin, okay, and cyclophosphamide also can cause uh, this uh, condition. The other thing is the CNS infections. CNS infections can uh, cause SIADH, in particular um, uh, brain trauma or hemorrhage um, are also related. Uh, but the CNS disorders. And then the big one that licensing exams always focus on is lung, lung infections. Uh, lung infections, either pneumonia, uh, pulmonary abscess, tuberculosis. And the biggest one of all, this one is probably, if you take anything away from this presentation, it's this one, small cell lung cancer, that is by far the biggest uh, uh, 
cause and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on so okay you've got one of these things um, now what's happened what's happened in your body well the concentration of this hormone antidiuretic hormone is increased this is a hormone that's produced in the hypothalamus and delivered to the posterior pituitary and when this is uh, increased I'll attempt to draw that nephron again all right so this is the nephron right and this is the collecting duct right here well when you have a lot more ADH than normal a lot of water is being reabsorbed back into the system and less water is going out into the urine so what does this do what does this result in well I'm going to uh, first touch really briefly on some of the symptoms and then we'll get into what all this causes well the symptoms of SIADH are really if there are any symptoms they're neurological so um, you have altered mental status you can have a seizure and then other nonspecific uh, uh, symptoms like nausea and vomiting and headache and if it's serious enough, a person can go into a coma. But uh, really, the diagnosis, which is the next thing I'd like to talk about, is a very interesting way of diagnosing it. A lot of times, it's just simply low sodium. I'll just write out the word. Low sodium. A person comes into the ER, and you know they've got those symptoms that I've mentioned, and when you draw the initial labs, you find that they have a low sodium level and the investigation then begins now how do we diagnose this I mean what, what do we do like a CT of the head or I mean what's the story well really the focus is really on the labs think about what's happening in SIADH and you'll pr pretty much be able to figure out what the labs will be like so remember water is coming back so you're going to have a dilutional effect in the bloodstream and as a result you'll have hyponatremia okay that's the first thing now the osmolality of the uh, of the blood serum is also going to be low you have more water less solute so low osmolality of the serum and then now let's concentrate on the urine. What's happening in the urine? Well, the urine, I'll write it over here, is more concentrated. So you have a high osmolality in the urine because more water is coming back, less water is going out. And very similarly, you have more water going back, and as a result, more sodium is coming out. So you have a high urine sodium high urine sodium so the diagram explains it really well so then let's list all those things so you'll have a low serum sodium level and let's give some numbers less than 135 uh, milli equivalents uh, per liter you have low serum osmolality let's give some numbers again less than 280 milli osmoles per kg of H2O and then now we're talking about the urine so the urine will have a high urine sodium level uh, greater than 40 milli equivalents per liter and then the urine will also have urine will have a high osmolality and it's greater than 100 milliosmoles per kg of H2O now this say uh, you know instead of just memorizing this think about why this happens and look at that diagram again and the diagram will explain what ex why this is all happening other important tests that uh, are involved uh, in uh, the diagnosis of SIADH are trying to find an underlying disorder so remember we talked about the pulmonary disorders so you'd probably want to do a CT of the chest to investigate also remember we talked about CNS infections and all that so you might want to do a CT of the head 
and then a good medication history because uh, certain medications can cause this. I wanted to touch base really quickly about something that's tested a lot on licensing exams and it is something called perineoplastic syndrome. Now why am I talking about this? Because SIADH is a perineoplastic syndrome. It's something that's associated with a, a tumor. And SIADH is a very commonly tested perineoplastic syndrome associated with small cell lung cancer. And it's, it's found that ectopic ADH can be found in the small cell lung car carcinoma. And as a result, if somebody has this, they can develop SIADH. And SIADH can also occur uh, with pulmonary conditions uh, such as pneumonia and abscess and tuberculosis as well. Now let's touch base about the treatment. Okay, so how do you treat this? Well, the treatment really in focuses on treating the hyponatremia. And the way you do that is you give uh, salt administration in the form of hypertonic saline hypertonic saline and uh, this has about uh, 3 percent uh, sodium chloride in it this is 3 percent sodium chloride solution now what's important is that you have to check their sodium levels every two hours because you can only increase their sodium by one to two milli equivalents per liter per hour so let's say somebody came into the ER and their initial sodium level is 125. You only want to go up every hour by one or two. So 126, 128, like that. And because if you do it too fast, what will happen? Well, there's a very commonly tested uh, syndrome that can occur, a complication, and that is central pontine myelinosis. This is commonly tested. This can happen um, when uh, this is uh, referring to the pons in the brainstem. This syndrome is involving the demyelination uh, of the pons, and that can happen if the hyponatremia is corrected too fast. So, as a result, you only correct it by one to two milli equivalents per liter per hour. And another thing that's given is uh, Lasix. Because remember, uh, ADH, antidiuretic hormone, antidiuretic, it's doing the opposite of a diuretic. So you give Lasix, which is a diuretic, to kind of counter the effects, help uh, increase the free water excretion rather than reabsorbing it. The other thing you need to do is you really need to investigate the underlying disorder because SIADH really, really is as a result of something else. So you need to investigate does this person have some sort of lung condition you know does the patient have a C, uh, CNS disorder as I talked about you know look at their medications you really need to investigate the underlying disorder the last thing I would like to mention uh, before I show you a clinical vignette is medications that can be used to treat SIADH there's two there's an older one uh, that's called demiclocycline this was uh, commonly tested uh, in licensing exams of the past because this actually diminishes the response of the collecting tubule to ADH. It does the opposite. Well, it doesn't do the opposite, but it, it, it makes it so that ADH doesn't uh, work as well on the collecting tubule. But a more recent medication are medications called Vaptans. Vaptans. There's one in particular. I mean, I've never prescribed this, but you know, it's on the licensing exams. These medications are essentially ADH antagonists or vasopressin antagonists. Vasopressin is just another name for ADH. When you have a lot of ADH, you give something that counters it. All right, so that's basically a talk about um, SIADH, and I'd like to show you a clinical vignette to end off the presentation. So here we go. So this is the vignette. 65-year-old homeless man presents to the emergency room after police find him disoriented on the streets. The patient gives little history but admits to ongoing cough with productive sputum, uh, night sweats and chills, mild dyspnea. He proceeds to suffer from a seizure. Vital signs demonstrate elevated temperature, respiratory rate of 26 
breaths per minute, 94% oxygen on three liters of oxygen, pulse of 87. And no evidence of orthostatic hypotension. Physical exam demonstrates a malnourished and disheveled man in a post-ictal state. No sign of injury to the body. Crackles can be heard in the right lung base. Lab work demonstrates a serum sodium of 120. Serum creatinine of 1 and a negative alcohol and toxicology screens. Chest x-ray demonstrates large infiltrate in the right lower lung consistent with pulmonary infection or abscess. All right. Well, it's uh, easy to figure this out once you've just finished a presentation about ADH, but I'll briefly touch on what they're talking about. Well, this is a man that is obviously presenting with some pulmonary pathology, okay? I mean, it's very clear with the symptoms and the physical exam right here, and then the, it even tells you a chest x-ray. Now, remember we talked about pulmonary infections being a cause of SIADH. Now you say, well, that's a long shot. How would I figure that out? Right here. Serum sodium of 120. You remember normal sodium is 135 to 150? Well, that's a very low sodium. So um, these are the types of clinical vignettes you probably need to practice a lot on. And um, this uh, presentation, uh, I wanted to explain how you would tackle this type of uh, question on a licensing exam. So that's a presentation about SIADH.